You're on KTN Prime. Thank you for staying with us. President Uhuru Kenyatta is now set to be sworn in as the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya uh, next week on Tuesday. This is in line with the seven-day period provided by the Constitution after a ruling is delivered by the Supreme Court. This comes as NASA maintains it will push forward with the establishment of the People's Assemblies that seeks to call for a repeat of the presidential election by the 9th of February next year. It will be the second time that President Uru Kenyatta will be taking an oath of office for another term of five years as the country's president after his first swearing in in April 2013. In line with Article 141 on assumption of the office of the president, the swearing in of the president elect shall be in public before the Chief Justice, or in the absence of the Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice, and it will be on the first Tuesday following seven days of the Supreme Court verdict. The swearing ceremony is set to be held on the 28th of this month, which will be Tuesday next week at Kasarani Sports Complex, and in the presence of Chief Justice David Maraga. Already preparations for the swearing-in have started in earnest, including sending invitation cards to different heads of state and government around the world. Assumption of the Office of the President Committee that is organizing the swearing-in visited Kasarani Stadium Monday afternoon to inspect the grounds where the swearing-in will take place. The uh, field itself here, uh, the arena here can accommodate uh, 60,000, like, like, like you say. But we also have the uh, spear of areas that we have identified. However, the swearing-in comes at a time when the country is divided and polarized after the repeat presidential election, which saw NASA leader Raila Odinga withdraw from the race. And the president-elect will have a duty to reconcile the country. The constitution has provided the mechanism and the infrastructure in uniting the country, bringing equity across the, all regions of our country. Kamaraila wanted to be the president of this country. He had a vision. Uvuru wanted to be the president of this country. They all have a vision for this country. These are two people who can sit together. Alafu wa unge, alafu wa juwe nini ya nyinafanyika. Itabidi uhuru. Si alisema ataongea na Raila. Amuite wa unge mbila kusikiza watu wengine kando kando. After the 2013 general election, which also left the country divided, the president and his deputy organized meetings in different counties, preaching unity and peace among Kenyans who support different political ideologies. A legal solution may not be a solution in the circumstances. This requires a political solution. It requires Kenyans participating, a feeling that they are part of this government. It's not about Uhuru and Ruto and a few other people around him. It's about Kenyans as a whole. He also uh, is going through his last term, so he may want to leave a legacy as a president that who brought everybody together. He has nothing to lose. Um, the burden is in 2022 is for the deputy or any other aspirant. But it will not be a walk in the park for the duo. Alafu sheria inasema, ukitaka kuapisha rice, ulete judge. Orengu ataleta, judge. Tutakuwa tunafunje sheria ama atufunji sheria. Wale wakiapisha na sisi, tunapisha. Wakiapisha, tunapisha. Even if it was to take a Bible and be sworn in by any other person and take oath. But will that oath be recognized as an oath for an office of the office of the president? I don't think so. Unless it's conducted in the manner that is prescribed under the constitution, then it does not become a valid uh, issue. For me, that is a political statement. But even as such plans remain scanty, the national resistance movement continued to push for the adoption of a motion to form a people's assembly in the county assemblies that will be used to approve a repeat of the presidential poll by 9th February next year. The opposition can continue with the role of opposition because uh, any government needs uh, a watchdog and the opposition can do that job and continue to demand for... Uh, change in, in the issues they were interested in, for instance, the IEBC and other institutions. The NASA leadership has promised to continue with their plans to pile pressure on the Jubilee regime through street protest until they agree over a repeat presidential election and an announcement will be made within the next five days. 
Even as President Uhuru Kenyatta prepares to take an oath of office for the second time, it is evident that an uphill task awaits him to reconcile the Kenyan people, given that the NASA leadership has vowed not to recognize his government. Chris Dairo, KTN News in Nairobi.